Hey everyone, Connie here with a quick first impressions review of iCarly 2021. Um, I will be discussing the first episode mostly on here, so if you have not seen the first episode, I would suggest checking it out before this. Um, but just to briefly get into it, I grew up with iCarly. I watched the series, I really enjoyed it, I, I love the dynamic between the actors. The comedy was really on point, which for a live action comedy sitcom, really, uh, for a younger audience, that was not really uh, that common throughout the years. On Disney, on all kinds of various networks, when you had those, mostly Disney. <laughs> um, but it was really good, and I really enjoyed it. It's, I, I love Jerry Trainer as Spencer. He was fantastic in Drake and Josh as well. Um, Miranda Cosgrove, definitely one of my favorite actors growing up. Um, just really loved her in pretty much anything she was in. I Carly, Drake and Josh, School of Rock, she's amazing in. Um, and she's an okay singer too. <laughs> Not really my kind of music, but... Um, and so on and so forth with all the different uh, actors and whatnot in it. Um, so when I, I heard this was getting kind of a uh, sequel series, I guess you'd call it, <laughs> um, I, I was interested. And then I heard more recently that this series is being made not for a younger audience, but for the people who grew up with iCarly. And so much so that I heard there was going to be adult situations in it. Adult situations, swearing, sexual discussion and stuff. And I'm thinking like, oh, <laughs> that's a surprise. And so that got me interested. And if it wasn't for that, I might not have actually ended up checking this out. But I checked out the first episode and it's really good. It definitely feels more adult. But the first episode doesn't go too heavily into that. Um, but you can tell it's definitely there for the original fans. It's continuing off of things. It's uh, bringing things into the current day. And we get to see basically where all of our characters have ended up since the end of the series, the original series. And it's really interesting to get back into this. And obviously there will be spoilers going forward in this. Uh, if I hadn't made that clear already. So, if again, if you have not seen the first episode, I would suggest seeing that, because I haven't seen anything past that, so this is just for the first episode. So, this episode takes place years and years later, pretty much, I assume, same time frame as it would be with, like, reality. Um, Carly had like gone to Italy and stuff. She had uh, done college and everything. And, and she's just kind of trying to figure things out. Um, she has a boyfriend who she's planning on doing this new show with and everything. And the episode focuses on her and her boyfriend breaking up and her kind of dealing with it and moving on into start restarting the iCarly web show. Um, Spencer is rich from his uh, art and everything, and he's just doing exceptionally well and being as weird as ever, which is like, it, it's good to see that he's still weird, he's still goofy, and he, he seems on, only semi-comfortable with his wealth. It, it's like, it's it's not something that he's like flaunting or anything, but he, he very much is enjoying it at the same time, which is fair enough. I'm not a fan of wealth in like real life, but when it's used for comedic effects like this, it can be well done. Um, and Freddie is a two-time divorced single father of an adopted daughter who is also a character in this. And I really love that for his character. Based on how we saw him in the original series and everything, I fully believe this. 
He, he is a two-time divorcee. He shares custody of his daughter with his ex. But for the, for the sake of the series, I assume we're probably not going to see much of his ex, at least at first. So it's going to come across as more of a single father situation with him and his daughter. His daughter is very social media savvy to the point where she's like, like a very much a modern kid, you know, and he's not always the best at handling that we can see, but he's trying. He's very much trying. Uh, Sam from the original show is not in this. Um, they explain away the character's absence that she's living out her dreams with a biker gang. The reason, though, is because Jeanette McCurdy has chosen to leave acting altogether due to having really bad experiences with it and really bad just overall. Um, her, her life was basically ruined by her acting experiences and everything. And it's a completely, if you, if you look it up and look up all her reasons and everything, it's completely fair. You cannot blame her. Um, she, she rightfully needed to just step back and just leave that world. And I say good for her, and that's awesome. And I, I really think that was a smart decision on her part. And I hope that she can just continue forward and be the happiest and best she can be. Sure, in some ways it won't be the same not having Sam in, in the show, but I think it'll still work. We have this new character who is Carly's roommate, who is very much implied to be pan, sexual, in, in the first episode, because Carly men is talking to her about dating and stuff and mentions to her, mentions that her roommate, I, I can't remember her name right now, I apologize, but mentions that she had, that she's like, she's had boyfriends, girlfriends, and even non-binary partners and everything. It's like, or at least that she has shown interest in them and everything. And it's like, that's, that's really heavily implying that. And it's like, it's practically saying it's, it's not even really implication. And it's like, awesome. That's really cool. And it's very clear that this, what kind of route this is taking in terms of that kind of stuff as well. It, it's very, it, it's progressive. It is. It definitely comes across that way, but it's not trying to like necessarily hammer it in. It's just trying to be very, it, it's just trying to be very, how do I put it? Natural with it. Like everything is just like, it's just part of the world, basically. Um, This new friend, um, kind of fills in the same role as Sam did. She's kind of snarky and sassy, kind of has that side to her. Um, but she definitely brings in a little bit of a spicy edge to the series in, in the way that Sam did with the original, al allowing her to work well off of Miranda Cosgrove and Jerry Trainer and Nathan Kress and all of them. And yeah, just overall, we have the same kind of humor. We have the same kind of just everything. It just, it, it is iCarly. iCarly is back, but this is for the adults who grew up with this, with the original series. And that's, and it's made very clear. It's for those people, for those adults. And I like that. I, I like that we're getting that follow-up series. And, and because not every time they do a follow-up series like this, does it need to also be for kids? And I like that. That's why I like, that's one of the reasons why I like Legend of Korra so much, because it is very much more mature than The Last Airbender. And that's by no means saying The Last Airbender did not tackle mature subjects. It very heavily did, constantly. But it, it's very clear that Legend of Korra was made to be for a bit of an older audience. It was made for that. And then that's very much the same case with this uh, revival of iCarly. So overall, I really do enjoy this. It, again, it just really feels like a more modern adult iCarly. And again, it's still got the same kind of humor in it. So it's, it's not like it's 
totally inaccessible to a younger audience. But I would love to hear your thoughts if you've seen the first episode, so tell me in the comments below what you thought. And for now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. So see you all next time.